it's the youngest Yamazaki single malt, but does it do the family proud? Welcome to Kanpai Planet. I'm Mac, bringing you the world of Japan's drinks direct from the heart of Tokyo, and today we're taking a look at Yamazaki Distillers Reserve. Japan's first and oldest malt whiskey distillery, Yamazaki is located at the confluence of the Katsura, Kizu, and Uji rivers on the periphery of Kyoto. The area is known for its high quality water and is even mentioned in the Manyoshu. Ground was broken in 1923 and they began making whiskey at 11.11 on the 11th of November, 1924. The purity of the water is one of the official reasons why the distillery is located where it is. Yamazaki's first distillery manager, Masataka Taketsuru, yes, that Masataka Taketsuru, told his boss, Suntory's founder, Shinjiro Tori, that he wanted to build a distillery in Hokkaido. This was the response he got. Products that people can't go and see being made at a factory won't sell well. The factory must be near Osaka. This was one of the first of many disagreements that these two Japanese whiskey legends would have. Taketsuru would go on to build his dream distillery at Yoichi in Hokkaido for Nika, something I've covered elsewhere on Kanpai Planet. Shinjiro Tori wasn't wrong about tourism though. The distillery welcomed over 100,000 visitors a year prior to the latest global pandemic. To commemorate Yamazaki's 60th anniversary, Suntory's second CEO and master blender, Kezo Saji, spent two years working with chief blender Ken Sato to develop Suntory's first single malt. On the 14th of March, 1984, they launched Suntory Pure Malt Whiskey Yamazaki. It was 43% ABV and cost 10,000 yen a bottle. It was the first widely available single malt released in Japan. Originally, it carried no age statement, but it was labeled as a 12 year in 1986. The next core expression that was released was the Yamazaki 18 year in October 1992, followed by the 10 in November 1995 and the 25 in October 1998. This was all happening against the backdrop of a huge decline in the sales of Japanese whiskey from their 1983 peak. Good times for tipplers in Japan. The single malts were readily available even as their global reputation was starting to rise. And the going remained good until sales started rising again in 2008. You see, in 2002 and 2003, the distilling work week purportedly started and ended on Monday at Yamazaki. Why keep overproducing? Now, since the end of 2010, the Yamazaki distillery has been running at full capacity, but whiskey is a long tail business. Faced with a boom in demand for stuff they had almost stopped making, Suntory phased out their youngest age statements, the 10 year olds, in March 2013, leaving us with only the Yamazaki distillers reserve that had been released on the 29th of May, 2012. The suggested retail price in Japan for a 700 milliliter bottle is 4,950 yen after tax. That's over 7% higher than prices are previously mentioned on Kanpai Planet, thanks to the Suntory price hikes of the 1st of April, 2022. It's also sold, mainly in convenience stores, in a chibi 180 milliliter bottle for 1,375 yen after tax. So what exactly is in this bottle? As always with Suntory, that's a struggle to find out. Long-term Kanpai Planet viewers know that I'm fascinated by fermentation and equipment at distilleries, but at a minimum, I like to know four things about the liquid in the bottle. Whether a whiskey has added color, if it's been chill filtered, the age of the components inside, and the barrel types that have been used to age them. So let's take that from the top. Regarding color, Suntory don't disclose that on the bottle. So I've reached out to some people at the company who should know, and they've told me that Suntory do not add color, but their customer service are a little more cagey on the subject. The amber color peculiar to whiskey is generated in the barrel where it is stored. There are differences in color tones by barrel, and some differences may remain after blending. Therefore, a small amount of caramel color would be sometimes used, but we cannot answer whether it is used or not for each product. Thanks for that. Let's travel to Germany, where it's a legal requirement to declare the ingredients in a bottle of whiskey. 
Well, unfortunately, there's no clarity there because some retailers say it is colored and others say it isn't. I even turned to Twitter, but the whiskey community soon faced the same frustrations that I do. Perhaps some batches do have color and some don't. And I know for Suntory that consistency is very important to them. Of course, Beam Suntory are not alone. Diageo, White and Mackay, and more, all seem to think that consumers don't deserve to know what's exactly inside these bottles. Similarly, there's no declaration about chill filtering. Now, given the fuss that Suntory have made in the past when something is non-chill filtered, I would suspect that this is. Plus, an expression like this is specifically designed to work across a number of serving styles. Straight, yes, but also a highball, mizuari, meaning added water, and on the rocks. So yes, pretty sure it's chill filtered. As for the age of what's inside, the press at the time of its UK release in 2014 suggests that it contains liquid that's been aged between eight and 20 years, and to my knowledge, that's still true. I have found out that the average age of components is nine years. That does vary from batch to batch, but it does give you an indication of how much eight year is in here versus 20 year. It uses Spanish oak sherry casks, American oak bourbon casks, and Japanese oak mizunara casks. But to that mix, they add components aged in French oak Bordeaux wine casks. That wine aged component is the main compositional difference between this and the rest of the Yamazaki core range. It uses mainly unpeated malt, but there's also some peated malt in the mix too. It's classic Suntory 43% ABV. The bottle tries to capture the essence of the Yamazaki brand, which fifth generation chief blender Shinji Fukuyo describes as deep, complex, and multi-layered with fruit and Mizunara notes. Has he succeeded? And is it any good? Let's find out. Thank you to all our subscribers, but please hack the algorithm by setting that bell icon to all notifications and be the first to know about the latest drops on Kanpai Planet. Let's check out the color. Bearing in mind what I said earlier, it's a pretty classic gold with some orange in there. On the nose. It's quite fiery. The nose is fairly rich and pretty pronounced. The first note I get is vanilla. Behind that, I get some ginger, some star anise, and some citrus notes. There is an acetone note there, and I think that's partly what's causing the fire up the nostrils. You can definitely detect the influence of that red wine aging. I am getting some raspberries, for example, and also some cereal grains, some chocolate, some toffee, and some characteristic mizunara notes. Dare I say it, sandalwood. Kanpai. Hmm, it is somewhat tannic. Huge influence there from that young red wine aged liquid. That of course also brings with it some red berry notes as well. There's some cedar wood and some incense and then behind that some sweetness in the form of honey and cinnamon and ripe red fruits. That spiciness that was there on the nose is there on the palate along with some astringency and bitterness which is a little off-putting. There isn't as much Mizunara character as I would like to see and what I expected given how important it is to the brand profile. It's a dram with quite an expansive mouthfeel and that does translate into the finish which is medium, you're getting some pepper, you're getting some oak spicing but the two things that really stand out, that tannic character and also it's pretty drying. So what's the verdict? The Yamazaki Distillers Reserve is a fairly decent dram. It's a reasonably well-made dram that does demonstrate some elements of the Yamazaki house style well. And yes, I am aware of the circular reference nature of that statement. However, the layering that you do find on the 12, the 18, and the new 25 is, in this case, a little unharmonious. Whiskey fans will be left wondering what could have been if that ABV was higher than 43%. It is tough to find other major flaws with it. It just is what it is. But every time I have it, I'm always left wondering. Given the thousands upon thousands of casks that they have to play with, and given that this is the most accessible version 
of their flagship single malt brand. And given what it's meant to encapsulate about Suntory's whiskey making history, is this really the best they could do? I don't really understand the use of those Bordeaux wine casks, if anything from a brand alignment perspective. And given they reformulated the 25 relatively recently, I wonder if we'll be seeing a new reformulated distiller's reserve soon. As for the lack of disclosure from Japan's industry leader, well, it's like I've said when discussing Japan's whiskey standards that were announced in February 2021, to which all of the Yamazaki range comply. It's all about transparency. I am very pleased that Japan's new wave of craft distillers, Kanosuke, Shizuoka, Sakurao, and more, are not following Suntory's example. Should you buy it? The Japanese RRP represents the most I'm prepared to pay for a bottle. There's plenty of great stuff out there, so don't overpay for it. Suntory, the most accessible expression of your flagship single malt brand, deserves better. Until next time, Kanpai.